Greece had seen a dictatorship from 1936 onwards, the 4th of August regime led by General Ioannis Metaxas. However, did you know that from 1967, another Greek dictatorship was established? How Greece became a dictatorship in the era of the Cold War and how it did end is what you will learn in this video about the regime of the colonels, the Greek junta. Keep watching. Hey, good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, my name is Stefan, I'm a Dutch history teacher. I like to cover history, preferably on location, like I do with these shortlist states episodes. And if you liked it as well, well, consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell. After World War II, the Greek Civil War took place between the communists and the nationalists and royalists. Eventually, the latter group would proclaim victory and Greece became a democracy, albeit a very unstable one. Greece emerged as a US-backed anti-communist state. Thanks to the American martial aid, the Greek economy grew from the 1950s. The 1950s in Greece is often referred to as the Greek economic miracle. It was a period of rapid economic growth and modernization that transformed Greece from a primarily agrarian society into a modern industrial state. The Greek economic miracle was largely driven by a number of factors, including a favorable geopolitical environment, a rapidly expanding population, increased investment in infrastructure and industry, and a supportive government policy. The Marshall Plan, which provided aid to European countries after World War II, was instrumental in the revival of the Greek economy. The Greek economic miracle led to the development of new industries such as tourism, shipping and light manufacturing. The government encouraged the establishment of new industries by providing tax incentives, subsidies and other forms of support. The growth of these industries created new job opportunities and helped diversify the Greek economy. Despite the impressive economic growth during the 1950s, the Greek economic miracle was not without its challenges. The rapid pace of growth put a strain on the country's infrastructure, leading to problems with housing, transportation and pollution. Additionally, the government's focus on the industrial development often came at the expense of rural areas, which suffered from neglect and underdevelopment. The origins of the Greek junta can be traced back to the aftermath of World War II and the Greek Civil War, which left the country deeply divided and politically unstable. In the years that followed, Greece was plagued by social and economic problems, political unrest and a series of governments that were unable to effectively address these issues. This created a sense of dissatisfaction and frustration among Greeks, which the military leader sought to exploit in order to seize power. On the 21st of April 1967, several weeks before the planned elections, a group of right-wing army officers staged a coup d'etat and seized power. They were led by Brigadier Silianianos Patakos and Colonels George Papadopoulos and Nikolaos Makaresos. Their strategy was a mix of surprise and confusion. Tanks were placed in strategic positions in Athens, which allowed them to gain control over the Greek capital. Smaller units were sent out to arrest opposition people. Lists were already prepared. Around 10,000 people were arrested, among which the acting prime minister. And so, the regime of the colonels was born. The Greek junta, known as the regime of the colonels, was a military dictatorship that ruled Greece from 1967 to 1974. This period marked a dark chapter in Greek history as the country was subjected to a brutal and oppressive regime led by a group of military officers. They also adopted a new flag, which looks like the current flag, although the colors were darker blue. The new regime immediately imposed a strict censorship on the media and arrested and imprisoned many political opponents and intellectuals. The junta also disbanded the parliament, banded all political parties and established a military government headed by Papadopoulos. Constitutional rights were immediately suspended, including the right of assembly. Strict censorship was imposed and lists drawn up of forbidden books, including some ancient Greek classics and forbidden music. Long hair on men and miniskirts on girls were prohibited. And this at the height of the swinging 60s. Everyone was told to go to church. This was not the first time modern Greece had transformed into a dictatorship. 
From 1936 till 1941, there was the 4th of August regime, led by General Ioannis Metaxas. The junta carried out a similar regime, although there were differences. They avoided Metaxas' rhetoric of the Third Greek Civilization because of its echo of the Third Reich. Yet, a slogan they did introduce was Hellas of Christian Hellenes. The junta carried out a similar economic policy to keep large sections of Greek society obedient. For entrepreneurs, there was easier access to capital and agricultural debts were cancelled. A network of roads, telephone lines and television were expanded. There were differences as well. Metaxas closely worked together with the king, but in 1967 King Constantine was left out of the coup. The king later did an attempt to overthrow the regime which failed and ended the Greek monarchy. As historian Roderick Beaton wrote, In the conditions of the 1930s it had been the monarch, not the dictator, to whom the armed services would ultimately owe their loyalty. Not so in the 1960s. The king's counter-coup on the 13th of December 1967 was a dismal failure. King Constantine fled the country, never to return as sovereign. The role of the armed forces was also different. During the seven years that the colonels ruled, the army was very visible in daily life. On the streets and in propaganda, where they appeared on billboards to celebrate the revolution of the 21st of April 1967. The regime justified its actions by using a metaphor drawn from surgery, as Papadopoulos stated. Do not forget, gentlemen, that we find ourselves in front of a patient on the operating table, whom, if the surgeon does not strap him down from the duration of surgery and anesthesia upon the operating table, there is a probability that instead of surgery bringing about the restoration of his health, it will lead to his death. Under the junta, Greece experienced a brutal period of repression as the military regime sought to eliminate any form of opposition. The regime was characterized by widespread human rights violations, including the use of torture, arbitrary detention and execution. Political prisoners were subjected to inhumane conditions in prisons and detention centers, and many suffered from physical and psychological abuse. Many were exiled to prison islands in the Aegean. Despite these repressions, a resistance movement emerged in Greece as opposition to the junta grew among ordinary Greeks and the international community. The resistance took many forms, including demonstrations, acts of civil disobedience and underground movements that sought to overthrow the regime. The junta's grip on power began to loosen in the early 1970s as international pressure and economic problems created increasing challenges for the regime. In November 1973, a student uprising in Athens led to a widespread strike, which was met with brutal violence by the military. This event sparked widespread protests and demonstrations and put significant pressure on the junta to step down. Let's take a look at this uprising. The Athens Polytechnic Uprising was a significant event that took place from the 14th to the 17th of November 1973. The uprising was a student-led protest against the military dictatorship. The protests began as a peaceful demonstration at the Athens Polytechnic University but soon escalated into a nationwide uprising against the government. The students were calling for the end of the dictatorship, the release of political prisoners and the restoration of democratic rights and freedoms. As the protests continued, the government responded with increasing force. On the night of the 17th of November, tanks entered the campus and the army opened fire on the students. 24 were killed and hundreds were injured, but it seemed the deaths that night were caused by police bullets. The violent crackdown sparked outrage and protests across the country. In the days after, martial law was declared and sporadic violence continued. Soldiers were stationed as snipers on rooftops and as many as 20 more civilians were killed. It is said 3,000 were arrested. The exact number may never be known. The event is remembered as a turning point in Greek history and celebrated each year on November 17th as a national holiday known as Polytechnic Day. In July 1974, a counter-coup led by Dimitrios Ioannidis overthrew Papadopoulos and the junta and installed a more hardline regime. This new regime was even more repressive than the previous one and led to a further crackdown on dissent and opposition. However, the end of the junta was near, as events in Cyprus proved to be the final straw. 
On July 20th, the military regime in Greece ordered the invasion of Cyprus in response to a coup staged by Greek Cypriots seeking union with Greece. In response, Turkey invaded Cyprus and in the ensuing violence thousands were killed. The war on Cyprus is a topic that deserves a video of its own. The actions of the Greek government sparked widespread international outrage and led to significant diplomatic and economic pressure on Greece, which eventually forced the military to step down. On July 24, the junta was finally overthrown in a bloodless coup and the democratic government was restored by Konstantinos Karamanlis. This marked the end of the Greek junta and the beginning of a long process of recovery and reconciliation for Greece. The transition to democracy is known as Metapolitepsi. The Greek junta remains a dark chapter in Greek history and a stark reminder to the dangers of military rule and dictatorship. Despite the end of the junta, its legacy still haunts Greece today as the country continues to struggle with many of the social and economic problems that contributed to the rise of the military dictatorship. The Greek junta was no more and the third Hellenic Republic was born. Greece had become a democracy once again. And this Republic still exists today. If you'd like to learn about other short-lived states, well, I have a playlist for you right here. And uh, if you'd like to learn about Greece's history, well, click right here. Well, thank you for watching and best wishes from Athens, Greece.